Welcome guys to another episode of Kerbal Space Program 2. Today's video we're going to be launching a rocket which I think is pretty cool. It's the uh, it's the N1 moon rocket from the uh, from the Soviet Union. Now you might be wondering why have you made another recreation? Well, you see, last time I made a recreation, everyone thought it was absolute garbage, so I made an actually good one. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, uh, patch two has just come out, and, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, one of the big things for me was they removed the weird, like, lines in the clouds, which it was an issue on AMD graphics cards, but, uh, that's fixed now. Uh, looks like they still have a lot of CPU optimizations to do, but GPU optimizations have come out a long way. Uh, the reason I know we have a lot of CPU problem still is because well if you notice we're actually running it you can't really see it but we're running at like six fps here and uh, as soon as we do the stage separation right here you'll notice that that instantly jumps up to almost eight fps which i know isn't that much but uh that's technically a 25 percent improvement in frame rate from just staging the rocket uh also I don't know if I have images of this, but I think that there's some, there's a lot of, uh, there's something, I don't know if it's physics or maybe it's aerodynamics, there goes the uh, launch escape system by the way, there's some kind of bottleneck in either physics or aerodynamics that is heavily single core uh, focused, uh, another stage step right there, you might notice that we're now up to almost 13 FPS, so yeah. Uh, but there's something, I, I'm thinking it's aero, aerodynamics that's using a lot of CPU because as soon as we exit the atmosphere, which we're going to do around now, you'll notice we instantly jump up to like 24 FPS, which is, it actually feels smooth compared to the other ones. And honestly, right now, I'm kind of treating uh, KSP2 the same way that I treat flight simulators. Like you don't really need 60 FPS to play it because you're not like fast paced. Another stage separation, by the way, right there. Uh, you don't really need, a, like, the greatest frame rate ever to, uh, to play KSB. I mean, it's nice to have a nice frame rate, but it's honestly not really that necessary? I don't know. Anyway, we still have that weird bug where, like, if you time warp after a stage separation, the game hates it, and it'll send that, that other craft out into infinity, which you just saw. Here's our deploying of the solar panels as well, by the way. So, uh... Here's our uh, N1 recreation. So the way, I'm pretty sure this mission is pretty much how, I mean, there has not been a successful N1 launch. So, I mean, you can't really prove that this would have been the exact trajectory. But uh, as far as I could tell, I designed this correctly so that it's actually how the N1 would work. So basically you have that huge first stage that gets you into orbit. And then the second stage, which kind of gets you... Uh, into space, into the moon. And then uh, an interesting thing that happens with the N1, which we're going to see soon here. Uh, I'm just time warping around because I thought that uh, I could uh, land on the, the daytime side at periapsis by doing this. Uh, no, it doesn't doesn't work like that. You have to go around the entirety of the sun to do that. But uh, here's actually something that I saw in a lot of diagrams of what this mission would look like. That, uh, that little transfer stage actually stays attached to the lander for a um for its descent until you know you get down to the surface and then the lander detaches itself obviously but i uh i was like having troubles with this mission because it's like how could this thing ever have worked i keep running out of fuel and it's because you're supposed to detect i keep running out of fuel when i try to uh get the lander to work because it's such a tiny lander now granted this isn't the actual hardware obviously but uh it still wouldn't work, and I was like, why isn't it working? It's like, I'm doing the launch wrong, that's why. <laughs> the The lander doesn't actually do all the, uh, all the descent. Also, um, I'm not entirely sure if the, uh, 
the lander or whatever the, the actual N1 did that kind of highly elliptical one, but I did it here as a way to save fuel on the, uh, so I could use more during the landing mainly. I mean, I could have kept going, but then it would have involved a little bit of fuel transfer, and I didn't really think that that would have been great. So that's probably the only thing I think I got wrong about this mission. Uh, so yeah, we're coming around. I uh, landed on the light side for you guys, so... uh it give me praise. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so here's, uh, here's the MUN. We can deploy those landing legs. I think the landing legs are always supposed to be deployed, but... I don't know. Also, uh, here's a live segment, so you guys can actually get a feel for uh, how the frame rates are here. And this is why I really think it's at aerodynamics that are, like, somehow really inefficient right now, because we're over the MUN. Now, granted, this isn't a huge spacecraft, and hence we don't, but, like, like we don't have crazy amounts of parts to deal with. But, I mean, there's a bit of parts on here. It's not the simplest of landers that I've ever made. But, um, yeah, GPU utilization is down to, like, 70% average, so that's actually pretty good. It looks like it's mainly being a CPU bottleneck right now, at least on my system, which is a uh, uh, Ryzen 7 3700X and a RX 6800 GPU, for those of you who don't know. So here, we're really trying to use the most to get out of that, uh, that's, that, uh, little transfer stage right there. Just to cancel out as much velocity as we can before we actually, uh, begin our main descent down. Should be happening shortly as we, uh, approach 50 meters per second above the surface. And there we go. We haven't actually burned out on that stage, however, I figured we do the main part of this landing segment with the actual lander. Also, uh, observe the, uh, explosion as it, uh, happens. It's, uh, it explodes. Watch. It's, it's pretty cool. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, descending to the surface of the mun. This surface looks amazing, by the way. I know a lot of people are uh, comparing this to the original KSB-1 terrain, but in my opinion, the terrain height mapping is so much better in this version. Because it's flat, but it's also, like, hilly, which is really, really nice. I, uh... Anyway, uh, the, the, the rover decided... The rover? I mean, essentially, it's a rover. I mean, did you just see it just did that, like, weird tailspin whatever <laughs> for some reason. So, uh, Gobo's here. He's gonna go out and he's gonna explore the mun. He sees a large rock over here and he's going to try to place a flag on it. Because, uh, we need a landmark for us to remember the site as the first place a Kerbal set foot on the mun. I mean, technically, we've set foot on the not mun, but uh, that was the not mun. This is the mun. Here we go. We're going to land on the rock and uh, plant the flag. Now, unfortunately for this, this Kerbal, he did not read the patch notes that said that the rocks were not actually solid yet. And uh, phased through the rock. Like, what a nerd. Am I right? <laughs> Anyway, here we are. We're naming, we're naming this site. We did part of the stuff where we said we would do all about the things. And then he's going to place the flag. Yeah. Place the flag. Got to inspect it. Make sure it's all sturdy. He determines. It is good. And here's a cinematic shot of Kerbin, the Mun... And also the sun. I don't know, I was bored and I was like, let's make some cinema out of it. <laughs> anyway, it's time for us to return to our uh, orbiting ship. So first we get into the lander. The uh, LK something or other lander that I don't remember the name of. Because I'm 
not that much of a nerd when it comes to Soviet stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we, I determined here that it's going to be better for us to take off with the RCS for some reason. No, I don't have an explanation. I was like, let's go up with the RCS. So we did that, and then we ignited the engine. Maybe we wanted to, like, prevent spraying dust everywhere all over our uh, brand spanking new flag. There's my there's my head cannon right there. And then we can begin our uh, main our, uh, ascent from the mud. There's the word. I want to keep it pretty close to the surface here uh, for the sole purpose of, uh, yeah, that's, that's the reason. Just, yeah. <laughs> I accidentally overburned here a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean pretty much a lot, so <laughs> I had to bring that back a little bit, but uh, circularize here, and we're going to basically uh, correct our uh, inclination and then just time warp around a couple times. So that we can uh, get a nice encounter. Then I use the maneuver node editor, which I actually feel comfortable using now, which is pretty great because it actually functions now. It, it really had some bugs before, but now it's fixed, and that's uh, that's great. And then we're going to uh, finish out correcting with the uh, RCS. And we get within about 500 meters. Uh, once we're a little closer, I think... I think somewhere around here we correct or not. I guess I thought I corrected this. Maybe not. Then I do a couple pulses of the uh, the engines to get a little bit closer. And then... Yep, yeah, we... Uh, Form our successful rendezvous and then move in with RCS. I decided to move in with RCS because we were running a little low on fuel and we had the motor propellant for it. Now, you know, I say that as I <laughs> use the engine and blow right past the stupid <laughs> the freaking thing. Uh, in the real uh, mission, this would have docked here, but uh, as you know, uh, docking doesn't really docking in this game at least maybe it does now but uh didn't work so we just did a rendezvous and then i uh sent that uh stage away to the crash into the mud while i uh get out with the kerbal and fly back because you know this is the soviet union and we only t we only get our cosmonauts to do the, the the most intensive maneuvers for the sole purpose of reasons. Yes. Okay. Now I didn't want to remove that little skirt there that I made because it gave the vessel realism. But for some reason the engine wasn't like working. It's like it thought it was like in a stowed position or something, which I mean it wasn't game, but. The game thought that it actually was, like, inside of a fairing, because it is on a fairing, I guess. So we had to deploy it before the engine would work, which is unfortunate, but... Can't really do anything about that. The game is just not going to do it sometimes. And sometimes I did a bunch of tests with this vehicle, mainly because of uh, issues with the launch. Um, I had some troubles launching this vehicle. Anyway, here we'll jettison our extra extra uh, crew pod and the server stage as we prepare for our descent into the atmosphere. Now, I somehow managed to get those those markers like locked onto the screen. Somehow, I don't know how that happened. So, see the six meter, five meter, and twelve meter markers. I don't know why, but that happened. So that's fun. Anyway, here's our parachute as we uh, land on the surface of Kerbin after a successful lunar landing at night because the game hates me. Anyway, the stability of this version has seems to have improved a lot. Like, I got a lot of the bugs 
that were happening on the original uh, version of this launch did not happen in this new patch, which is why it took so long to get this video out. It would have been released last week, but bugs happened. So now they don't happen. Anyway, we've come to the end of the video. Guys, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to watch more of my content, then you can always look on my homepage and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell and click the like button and post a comment and that stuff. I don't remember all those things. Anyway, bye!